Welcome everyone. Feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat and where you're joining us from. We'll get started in just a minute. Uh, we have Carol here. I'm looking forward to introducing you all to her and uh, to get going on her talk. And as you introduce yourselves, everyone, definitely check that you're sending it to all panelists and attendees so that everyone in the chat can see. Welcome, everyone. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Very excited from wherever you're joining us from, whether this is your first webinar or you've been to a couple different webinars with us. My name is MK Comer. I am a Women Who Code Leadership Fellow and I help run the front end and mobile tracks. Thank you all for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and give a warm Women Who Code welcome to you all. Um, a little bit about what we're about here at Women Who Code and different ways you can get involved with Women Who Code if you're interested. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Carol. Uh, Carol's with us right now. Hi, Carol. Welcome. Carol is uh, developer operations at Facebook, and she is here to talk to us about navigating the dynamic tech industry. A couple of logistics for this webinar. Uh, as I said, feel free to introduce yourself via the chat uh, to all panelists, uh, and, and feel free to share where you're joining us from. It's always very exciting to see women joining us from all over the world. Uh, and for today's webinar, we will be doing a 45 minute talk and then we'll save Q and A at the end. So please feel free to submit your questions via the Zoom Q and A functionality and we'll be sure to answer those at the end of the, of the talk. And like all of our webinars, we are currently recording. So say hello everyone <laughs> to the rest of the world. We're recording and this will be posted to our Women Who Code YouTube channel, which I will send a link to as we kind of close up the talk. That being said, uh, a warm Women Who Code introduction and welcome to you all, whether or not this is your first webinar or you've had a couple webinars with us. Uh, women Who Code is inspired to uh, inspire women to excel in technology careers. That is our core mission. And we truthfully envision a world where uh, women are representative as technical executives, founders, VCs, board members, and software engineers. And uh, our, our goal is to serve that mission and that vision. Before we get started today, I just kind of wanted to run through our code of conduct. Women Who Code is an inclusive community dedicated to providing empowering experience for everyone, uh, regardless of gender, gender identity, uh, expression, so sexual orientation, physical appearance, body size, race, ethnicity, religion, all of the above. Uh, and as we like to joke, preferred programming language. Uh, our events are intended to inspire women to excel in technology careers. Uh, so that being said, we do not tolerate any harassment of members in any form. And this event uh, especially would like to uphold that code of conduct. Our target audience at Women Who Code are engineers with two or more years of experience looking for support. Uh, and our goal is to provide resources for you all to strengthen your influence and level up your career. So welcome uh, and thank you for being here. And of course, as we wrap up 2020, this is our one of our last events for 2020, at least for the front end track. Um, we hope that throughout this challenging year, um, as we've all been asked to isolate around the world, we hope that Women Who Code has been able to provide a connecting force for you all uh, to create that sense of belonging. And that is our goal for 2021 as we continue during these tough times. That being said, uh, we just had our big conference, our Connect Forward conference last week, and we have reached over 250,000 members around the world. Uh, we have 70 networks in 20 different countries and members in 120 different countries. Uh, we put on over 2,000 events annually, uh, like this event here today. And we also provide conference tickets and scholarships, as well as access to jobs and resources if you're looking for your next uh, career move. Uh, but ultimately, we're here to provide infinite connections for you all. 
Today we're here specifically with the front end track. However, we also have been promoting this event via our mobile and data science tracks. So if you're joining us for mobile or data science, welcome, thank you for joining. Uh, each of these tracks uh, were launched in 2019 and they provide tech talks, workshops, tutorials, trainings, study groups, project groups, discussions, panels, fireside chats, lightning talks and networking opportunities as well as access to the latest coding resources. So if you're interested in uh, developing a technical expertise in any of these other areas, I encourage you to check out our other technical tracks. All of the tracks are digital and fully remote events. Uh, so that will be able to service everyone from all over the world, uh, regardless of where you are joining us from. That being said, uh, if you're interested in getting involved, whether or not that's speaking with us and putting on a talk uh, like Carol is about to, or you're interested in volunteering, uh, we have a great volunteer team at Front End. I uh, would be more than happy to welcome more volunteers. Uh, so go ahead and reach out to any of those above uh, below email addresses at womenwhocode.com if you're interested in speaking or getting involved. Likewise, we also do sponsorship events. If you're interested in putting on a talk or your company's interested in using Women Who Code for job resources, feel free to reach out to our partnerships team at womenwhocode.com. Uh, we love partnering with different companies from around the world to put on great events and also provide access to job resources and our members as well. Just to put something on our radar before we get started, uh, we are in the works for front end to develop our 2021 roadmap for events. Uh, we are going to be kicking off the new year with some more front end Fridays uh, and specific study groups. Uh, so you'll see the schedule there with more specific uh, front end topics uh, spearheaded by one of our lead volunteers, Cecilia. Uh, we also have an accessibility multi-series uh, on our calendar, it should be posted there shortly. Um, and we also are looking to do more front end full disclosure, which is an AMA session, Ask Me Anything session hosted by our front end volunteer team. It's a great opportunity to network with other members in the front end community specifically, uh, and also a great opportunity to ask questions to some of our volunteers who have uh, years of experience in the field and are happy to provide resources and support there. So please be on the lookout, uh, but also keep in mind, enjoy your holidays, take some time off. This has been a long year, uh, but we look forward to uh, upcoming events in 2021. So be on the lookout for those. And without further ado, I would love to introduce you all to Carol. Carol is joining us. Uh, she is developer operations at Facebook. And a little bit more about Carol. Carol uh, is a software engineer and data scientist passionate about innovation. She was a developer circles community lead for the Roby chapter between 2018 and 2020. Carol is currently working at Facebook as Dev Operations Review and Support Specialist, supporting developers who build on Facebook's platform products, including Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Instant Games, and other emerging developer products. Uh, so without further ado, welcome, Carol. Thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to your talk on navigating the dynamic tech industry. All right. Thanks, Mary, for that wonderful introduction. Um, so just to, you can all hear me, right, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I'll just share my screen and then you can let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, looks good on my end. Okay, great. Um, so I'll just get straight into it so that we don't, waste too much time and so that we can give enough time for questions at the end. Um, um, so he hello everyone, I am super excited to be here and to speak with all of you um, on this very important topic of navigating the dynamic tech industry. Um, thank you Mary for that uh, wonderful introduction. I'm pretty excited to be here with all of you. And I'm going to jump straight into my presentation um, so that uh, we can have ample time, like I said, at the end. Um, so we move to the next slide. All right. Uh, so my name is Carol Kariuki, as you've had. Um, I am working at Facebook and I'm with the developer operations team. I support developers building on top of our platform products. Um, 
professionally, I'm a software engineer and a data scientist. And I was a developer circle lead um, for the Nairobi chapter between uh, 2018 and mid this year, mid 2020. And uh, besides that, I love music, singing and dancing. Um, that's what I do in my free time, mostly if I'm not busy at work. Um, I'm Kenyan, as you've had, and I know that there's this, okay, most of you, I assume, know that Kenyans, um, we win all the marathons in the different Olympic uh, competitions, but I can't save, sorry, I can't run to save my life. <laughs> um, so don't assume that all Kenyans can run fast. Um, I keep fit by playing Beat Saber on Oculus, and I just love Oculus and things VR and AR. Um, so that's a bit much about myself. So next, we're going to, uh, this is our agenda for the day. Um, we will go down memory lane and just see how the industry has been, um, the tech industry has been, and I'll, I'm going to share like uh, my journey throughout until uh, this year, 2020. And then next, we're going to see how to position yourself for success and how to stay in the industry and keep winning. And then when all is said and done, um, like, so what? So what's the point of all of this? And I hope you're going to enjoy and I will be happy to answer uh, any questions that you will have at the end. Okay. So I prepared us a very nice fancy speed train for all of us to hop in. Um, and I'm hoping you can just hop in virtually with me. Uh, get your best seat. Imagine you're in this lovely speed train and we're gonna take a trip down memory lane and see how it all started. So I'll give you like a, a few seconds to to buckle up and let's go. I'll be your captain for today. <laughs> um, cool. In a few seconds, we are back in time. So just imagine our fancy train was like a time machine. And now we're in 1833, where it all started. And here we see like we see two, two individuals, that's Ada and Babbage. So this is Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, who is uh, historically known to be the father of computers. And Ada and Babbage are in a party. This is the first time they are meeting. And Babbage was working on this machine called the Difference Engine. And uh, a background on, the, on this is that in these olden days, people used to, uh, like men and women used to do like very huge calculations just to figure out um, things like navigation, um, calculate when they're doing some shipping, when they're doing transportation, just any activity that involved math, they would do very heavy calculations and complex problems. Um, and they were doing this by hand. I'm sure you know the story um, of Charles Babbage. But then at this party, um, Everyone is having their drink and they're interacting. And Babbage is trying to show everyone that I have this machine that can solve the problem of um, calculating this, this um, I mean, doing the manual calculations. And so Ada is very intrigued and excited. And she seems to be the only one who is very intrigued by Babbage's innovation, even though Babbage um, just had a prototype, it wasn't fully working. And so Babbage noticed that Ada connected the dots in this difference engine, and she understood 
what Babbage was trying to build and trying to solve. But everyone else in the party was just having the time of their life. I don't know how parties in 1833 were looking like, um, but that's the kind of situation where it all started. And so what happened after this is um, Charles had a few issues with the person who had helped him like put up the architectural stuff behind the defense engine. And so he had to let that go. And he came up with a better idea, which we know as the analytical engine. So the analytical engine was advanced. It was better than the difference engine. Um, like, I mean, they, they had some like um, intellectual property issues with the other, um, with the people who had helped him to come up with a difference engine. Um, so we see him having to build a new product, which is an analytical engine. And this analytical engine um, is what gave birth to the first computer. And that's why Charles Babbage is known as the first, um, as a, as a father of computers. But then what's interesting is that um, Ada Lovelace, um, so after, after Babbage um, noticed that Ada was very intrigued and they, they both connected on this uh, difference engine, Babbage became um, Ada's mentor and they kept uh, working on the analytical engine together. And so what's interesting is that while Babbage saw this, um, this analytical engine as something that could only calculate and work with numbers, Ada saw it as a, a machine where these numbers could represent every other entity imaginable. And she wrote a program for that. Um, and even though both of them did not fully um, prove this concept. They had that spark. They started something. So that's why Ada Lovelace is considered to be um, the first programmer. Um, in my opinion, in fact, she is the first programmer because we know in programming, these numbers today are zeros and ones, and that's how computers communicate. And that's how Ada was able to have that spark of genius and say that numbers can actually represent anything and that's how we are able to innovate okay so i hope that's clear i hope i've given you like a good explanation of how it all started and so let's hop back <laughs> to the to our nice fancy um speed train and we're gonna go a little more into the future and this is 160 years later okay and so there's a lot that has happened by this time we have figured out the computer and what it does and a lot of innovation has gone um ha has been uh you know advanced and now we get into the 90s and 2000s and where we are at today. So 160 years later from 1833 is 1993. And this is where the internet was booming. Um, the internet was being introduced. And I'm not sure if you're struggling to see my screen, but um, we see in 1993, there's the internet and you can you can Google this um, this timeline. It's available online, and we see a lot. Things are moving very fast uh, in this time and in this season, and we see the internet. We see browsers coming up, and probably most of you were born around this time, and it, maybe a little or less, I mean, uh, a little earlier or just within this time. And I'm sure you have experienced uh, this evolution and how technology is moving fast. So we get the internet, we get fast browsers, um, we get um, faster computers. 
people are starting to build e-commerce platforms. They, we're beginning to connect the dots and the concept of Ada Lovely saying that numbers can represent every other entity except just making calculations. We are proving this concept with all of these innovations. And we're, we're seeing um, in 2000, the, the, um, the beginning or the, the birth of social networks. And um, as we go ahead, 2012, um, mobile data is fast spreading. People are moving away from the desktop and, and moving into mobile apps and mobile. Um, <clears throat> we are seeing better innovations and the computer is getting faster. People, we are just doing a lot. And right now, a lot of AI and data science because during this time, as we continued to innovate, we keep collecting data and it, it keeps growing and growing. And we, we now find new ways to work with what we have collected over time. And now we can predict the future, we can build um, robots, we can instruct them to do certain things. Excuse me. We have um, AR and smart devices. We have, um, you know, just, it, it's a beautiful world, it's a magical world. And so I will move on quickly to my next slide so that I can keep time. Um, so my journey started around the time where the internet um, was already there. And I first came across a computer in 2002. I think I was about 10 years old, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, um, so that was the first time I came across a computer and I was very intrigued by it. And um, I kept playing this game called the Science Encyclopedia. And what it would do is, um, so it was just a set of questions that would ask you science questions. And anytime I would answer correctly, it would give me a nice green tick if I answered wrongly, it will give me like an X. And I was very intrigued. So after getting excited about the computer, I started wondering how is this machine um, knowing what the correct answer is and it's able to um, tell me if I'm right or wrong. And as a 10 year old, it didn't make sense, but now that you guys um, our developers, you obviously know that there was an algorithm, very simple one, just to, or a Boolean, just to say true or false. But that's what really um, got me interested to find out why, how was it processing all of this? And so um, six years later, I'm in high school. Um, I'm about to complete high school. I chose computer studies as my main, one of my main subjects, and I start for my um, high school exams, which back in Kenya, we call it, we call them KCSE. Um, and so it was, I, I initially wanted to pursue medicine, but then to balance my choices, um, I chose all sciences. So that was physics, chemistry, and biology, so that I can have options. Um, because to do medicine, you have to have had, like, done all the three sciences. And then because I had the love for computers, I also did computer studies. And so um, I completed high school in 2009. And then I didn't wait for my KCSC results. And one time my dad is reading this uh, newspaper and he knows I'm interested and I love computers. And he sees an ad that says uh, mobile software programming course um, using the MIT curriculum. And he tells me about it and we're both so very excited. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dad, I'm going to go find this school and um, I'm going to start learning. So he gives me the money. It wasn't enough, but I went and registered. And until today, he doesn't know where that school is. But 
I went to that school, started learning mobile programming. Thank God I didn't go and party somewhere with the money. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today. Um, but that's how my journey began. I started learning Java, PHP, and I started building apps on the Symbian operating system that was running on the Nokia devices. And Nokia was being phased out of the market because as you can see, technology is moving very fast. It keeps changing. And so I had to learn Android development and Windows Phone at the time. So that's around 2012. And then 2013 is when I first got into the professional workspace, like getting, uh, getting an eight to five. And during between 2013 and 2015, I got a lot of professional experience. And then I was just doing a lot and I got tired. I needed to take a break. And so I decided to take a break. <laughs> and then, uh, so as you can see between 2010 and uh, 2012, I am a lone developer. I am building my own apps. Um, like I don't have an eight to five. So I'm, I'm playing by my own rules. Um, I, um, I kept building, I published a lot of um, applications in the Nokia Office store and Windows Phone. Um, I didn't publish much on Android, but I just had a lot of simple projects in, on my laptop. Um, and um, coming into 2016, um, so during my break, I, I was missing that programming element. Um, and so I decided to join a bootcamp that was teaching JavaScript. And so it was a two week bootcamp. And after the bootcamp, I had a friend in the bootcamp who asked me, so what are you going to do after this? Um, and I was like, oh, I'm just going back to where I was, but really I was just looking for new opportunities because everything had changed so much. And so uh, during this bootcamp where I had learned JavaScript, um, so fun fact or stupid fact <laughs> is while I was supposed to be taking a break because I was burnt out, I found another job as a social media analyst. And so I was helping this company like their clients' um, social media accounts and advise them how uh, perform better online and so it was Hey guys, sorry, I think I lost you. I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, let me just keep going. Mary, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Carol. I was just checking if you're... Sorry, can you hear me? Connection. Yes, I can. Okay, I kind of lost connection on my other device, but... Right, 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 right. Sorry, I'm back. Can Perfect. I don't. Yes, I can hear you. And there's not an echo anymore. Okay. Let me and, just uh, share my screen again. Sounds good. Uh, just in terms of timing, there is not a webinar after this. So it's it's fine if we run over a bit, just, just so you don't feel rushed. Okay, great. Um, yeah. I guess that was my internet misbehaving, however. <laughs> for that, um, yeah, I'm at this JavaScript bootcamp and my friend tells me my boss is looking for a, a developer and he needs someone who is uh, good at JavaScript. And I look at him and I'm like, dude, come on. 
I have just done JavaScript for two weeks. There is no way I am going to take this job. And it's, it's an entire startup that's running this Chrome plugin. Um, and they have clients, it's booming. And he was asking me to join the company at the time because he was moving, he was, uh, he was engaged somewhere else and needed to get a replacement. So I told him, that's a joke. I'm not taking it. But then he was like, ah, just think about it. You're going to do it. And so I told him I'm going to sleep on it. And so I went and thought about it. And he, I, I went back to him and told him I, I will give it a shot. So he introduced me to his boss. And his boss did an interview uh, with me. And then he sent me bugs to fix on this Chrome plugin that really users were depending on. And uh, I needed to fix those bugs really quickly and get that code to production. And so I spent nights and days studying the code base, but my friend really helped me to, you know, uh, understand the whole um, code base and uh, identify where the cracks were, but it, it, it really pushed me and it was sort of like jumping into the deep end like um yeah so let me just go on uh, i will talk about that a little later um and so so i joined um so his boss so i fixed the bugs and i sent back the the fixed nice running code back to him and then he keeps sending me bugs every other week to fix and so I was enjoying my social media job and fixing bugs on the side. And then one time he calls me and he says, hey, Carol, um, I like how fast you're fixing this bugs. Can you come in full time? And that's how I got the job. Um, and that's why I have been for the past four years uh, before joining Facebook. And during this, this four years at this company, um, it was a small startup but now has really, the user base grew um, a lot. And this startup was, um, so the Chrome plugin would let Kenyans shop from the comfort of their homes, um, from US and UK online retail shops. So Amazon, Victoria's Secret, um, Zara, any online store you can imagine in the US and the UK, and sort of people wanting to buy from there, but there are challenges getting those items home. Um, and home here is Kenya. And so the Chrome plugin would um, help Kenyans just add items to their cart whenever they're on Amazon or whichever store. And then they would check out with the Chrome plugin and this Chrome plugin would um, tell them how much they need to pay to their doorstep in Kenya and the company would take care of all the logistics um, on getting the items to, to their doorstep. And it was a very fun um, place to work because I loved the idea of it all and trying to fix um, the technology growing integrating more stores so that people can have a variety of where to shop from. And I learned a lot in terms of my skill, in terms of my mark uh, of solving real problems in the market. The user base really grew by great margins. Um, the shipping volumes grew from just like we would get when I joined, we would get like four huge wardrobe boxes. And then by the time I was leaving, we were doing like um, every week we would get like almost 40 of those wardrobe boxes. And I mean, a there was a lot of growth and with that growth, um, there were a lot of growth pains as well. And that also needed our technology to grow and expand. So I found myself um, working on the front end and the back end, and it was a very small technical team and you know helping just helping and and learning everywhere i could and so during this time the four years i got to join a developer community and facebook had started this developer circles program 
that allows developers in different local cities similar to women who code to come together, code, um, learn from each other, and just have that sense of community. And I was very passionate about building communities. I had a small stint uh, with Microsoft around 2012. I had started like um, I had worked with Microsoft on a, a small project to to get um, developers to build better products that were in line with um, a great user experience. Just making sure that developers are building the correct products for our users. And um, I also was involved with Google developer groups, but I, was, I wasn't very active. But I just really loved the community and the community in Nairobi is very vibrant. Um, every techie um, from Nairobi knows like I have is like a place to hang out and all those cool tech parties. It just gives give me a sense of community and just meeting with like-minded people really give me the support I needed at that time. And so joining the developer circle program i later um, became a lead together with a colleague of mine and i was able to build a community and i got to experience how it is to bring people together to help them learn uh, what they need to learn um, organize hackathons um, organize fun events um, you know just the whole um shebang that comes with you know bringing people together and it was really fun and i enjoyed that but then um, facebook um was very very um supportive of the communities and they would offer um training courses that that members could apply for and so i applied for the data science truck because i wanted my career to move elsewhere I didn't want to code all my life and we are getting, so it, it's now about seven years into, actually eight, cause that was around 2018, 2019. And I wanted to move into data science because I was um, also intrigued about data and what we can do and AI and machine learning, but I wanted to focus on data. And so I finished my data science course um, last year and I started looking for new opportunities that would give me that experience to be in a data science related career or a data science, um, complete data science uh, role. But then I, was, I had just started, like, I didn't have the industry experience. So it was hard getting a role that's fully focused on data science. And so I was also open to any roles that were um, that were, were dealing with, I mean, that was focusing on developer growth and developer related, um, uh, any developer related roles. And so that's why I made my move to Facebook um, and joined the developer operations. Okay, um, so here I, this is just like a summary of my evolution. Um, earlier, we saw how the internet uh, has evolved, and this is my evolution. So I started off with Symbian. That's where I learned Java and J2ME, which is a uh, Java 2 mobile environment. Um, Windows Phone, I was using C Sharp. Android, I was back to Java. Um, and then uh, for the web technologies and the Chrome plugin that I worked on, um, I was using JavaScript and I also learned React from a good friend of mine who offered to teach me React. Um, and so I did a lot of web technologies um, around there. And um, I, as I mentioned, uh, being part of a community was very um, integral in my journey. And now I'm in data science and that's how I, I that's, that's the direction I want to move into. Okay, so let's see how to position yourself for success. So the, maybe the big question here is, did I plan my journey? And the answer to that is, yes, I did. 
I planned everything. And well, most of it would have contributed, would, would have been out of sheer luck, but I sat down and write and, and wrote down a plan for myself. And so I like to, you know, segment my plans in in time frames of five years. So five, five, five. And so in the year 2010, when I, between 2010 and 2015, those were the years that I first wrote, sat down and wrote about. And I wrote this five-year plan when I was, I think I was around 16. And I was questioning a lot um, and I was asking myself where I wanted to go. And so I wrote down five things I wanted to achieve in five years. And my list had the most unrealistic <laughs> items, but then um, they, believe it or not, I did all of those that, the, I did all those, the things that were on my list, except for the one that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I don't think it will happen. Um, so just to let you know about the five-year plan and you can feel free to laugh about my plans, but the first plan was to become a mobile software developer. And at 16, um, I didn't know the, the nitty gritties about being a mobile software developer, well, I thought first I would go to uni and study software engineering. Um, and then, you know, I would become a mobile software engineer, but I just, um, I just wrote down what I wanted. So the first one was mobile software developer. The second one is, believe it or not, I wanted to study medicine and become a doctor. Hmm. Who studies medicine and software engineering at the same time? I don't know, <laughs> unrealistic. Uh, third option, I mean, third plan was I wanted to model. I wanted to become a model. I was just in my teens and, you know, imagining all the possible things that I wanted to do. And so, believe it or not, after high school, I actually went into modeling. I went and took some nice pictures and I want, I actually joined an, um, what is it called? A modeling agency and I just wanted to you know, be the face of, <laughs> and then, um, so I did that, it didn't work out, I didn't like the industry at the time, so I just, I just, you know, crossed it out, but I tried it, um, and so that's like one, two, three, four, was, I wanted to do music, because I love music, and I, I was like, I can sing, there's something I can do, I can be Beyonce, I can be the next Beyonce. But anyway, so uh, believe it or not, I went to studio and I recorded music. Yeah, so this was around 2010, as I was still studying mobile programming. Uh, after school, This I would do all these other things. And then um, the last one was, I wanted to have my own software company and it had a very nice name that I will not reveal at this time. <laughs> but then um, at some point I did register a company and I started looking for you know, clients to, to you know, work on projects for, um, but there were, it had its challenges. And so that did kick off very well. Um, so this is 2016, between 2016 and 2020, we have the next five years. And so here is where I was questioning um, what impact I wanted to create. And I, that's how I decided that I don't want to code all my life. I want to do something else with technology. And my path led me to data science and just discovering how um, the technology is changing fast and just trying to find my place and what impact I wanted. And so choosing data science, I wanted to marry my desire of becoming a doctor and technology. So, you know, data science um, in the medical field. 
AI in the medical field. And that's like what I am envisioning for myself at that point. So yes, I did plan everything that has happened here. But of course, um, you know, I believe in God and I believe he, he has helped me get this far. And so, yeah. Uh, let me move on to the next um, screen. And my point was, you need to create a roadmap for yourself, um, for, for you to position yourself for success and quantify what that success looks like. So for example, you are sitting down and you're planning this roadmap for yourself. Do you want to make money or do you want to create wealth? Do you want to be in on the Forbes list and the headline is um, put your name there and they say you are worth 45 billion, can be dollars, 45 billion euros, 45 billion bitcoins, whichever currency you want to put there. Just quantify what success looks like and put the numbers. And if you want to give back to the community, if you want to mentor other women, and if we have gentlemen in this call, if you want to mentor other young men, quantify it and put a plan for it. And um, just uh, you know, do the work. After you put out the roadmap, start presenting yourself um, for opportunities that will, will, will where you will meet other people to mentor. So just, you know, figure out what success looks like for you and quantify it because it helps you um, refine where you're going and what things you need to do and, and the strategies that will, will get you there. And so that said, you need to have your own board of directors. Um, companies have board of directors everywhere. They need people who can make decisions for the company and sort of direct where the company is going and make sure that it gets there. So if companies do that for themselves, why don't you do it for your own, uh, for, for yourself as well? Um, and what I mean by board of directors is, these are mentors, these are friends that you can identify that will lead you somewhere you want to go. So for example, let's say you want to be really good at React and you know someone who is very, um, very skilled in React. Appoint them as the board of directors in your life or in your, yeah, in your life and say, this person will be my uh, chief technology, uh, director and what you will do with this person is that you will you know develop a friendship and tell them that you want to be very good uh, at react the same way they are and that's your first board of directors and you can have board of directors for many different things um, probably you want to be a be better in finances look for someone who is good in their finances and appoint them. They don't have to know, but you have written them down and they're like, this person will guide me here. Um, maybe it's your spiritual life or someone who helps you deal with life better. Um, appoint those people, just people who will help you do life better and help you make the right decisions along the way. But you have to um, have a roadmap and ask yourself, where do you want to be? Um, who are this board of directors who will help me be on the Forbes list that will say I have $45 billion, uh, um, I'm worth $45 billion, um, or I have been able to mentor a pool of women, um, and this is what they are doing in their respective lives. Um, and once you do that, so my next points are get your foot in the door. So by this point, at this, uh, yeah, by this point, you have, you are really good at your skills and you have applied for a job or you've started your own company, but 
this is just what it represents. You you have what it takes, and now you're in the door. So if it's your dream company and you made it here, so what next? You need to start asking yourself how what impact can I create in this organization that will get me a seat at the table. And once you get the seat at the table, um, so this is after you prove yourself and now people can start recognizing you and saying um, so-and-so is really good at um, you know helping their teammates uh, so-and-so is really good at helping us think in a more um, in a direction that um, that really provides some impact in this area or in this whichever area it is within the organization, they will identify your light and they will want you to shine that light brighter. And so that's how you will get a seat at the table. And here you will be able to make, to make decisions for the company and to make decisions that really influence the industry. Um, and so after you've done that, you need to go out and make impact. So maybe you're planning to be at a certain organization for X number of years. What happens after that? What will you do with the skills that you have um, acquired um, all this time? Um, and once you do all this, you have you find that you will be indispensable. So that's why I have this little notes that say become invaluable. Recognize your gifts if you are good at if you're very detail oriented and you're someone who strategizes very well or you help your teammates get started on work and actually see them finish it those are your strengths and you need to play to your strengths and so once you recognize your strengths then you will be set up for success better so recognize those gifts that you have um, that make you unique and you know it's not gonna be rosy um in this industry uh things are moving very fast things can uh happen life can happen um and you need to build resilience you need to build that muscle that helps you cope in tough times um and that's why uh you know building resilience helps you cope better with different situations and you make better decisions and when you build that muscle you get better at it and you're able to help others along the way and as you can see we have different problems every day or every 100 years um see how 2020 just was you know came like a shocker and we have this whole pandemic that we don't even we didn't know we still don't know how to go about it but we have made progress and there there are always going to be problems so don't be afraid of new problems that's how you get to innovate and my last point is have cognitive flexibility and this is being new to being open to new ideas, being open to how other people think, being open to learning new things every now and then, because the tech industry moves very fast. And if you're not able to adapt, um, you can you can you can be left behind very fast. So just have that cognitive flexibility to be open to new ideas, to be open to learning. Um, and then how do you stay and win at this tech industry? And so for you to stay, you have to be seen. People have to remember you. People have to see what you're doing. And for you to win, you have to show it. And the only thing, the only way you can achieve this is one being part of a community um i see i have like a typo there but um that just means it's your heartbeat that's the heartbeat of the community 
So join our community. Um, it's lovely and it's very great that you are part of the Women Who Code community. We have developer circles. We have a lot um, of communities that you can join around you and even just friends who just call you out for things that you may not see in yourself, times when you doubt yourself and they tell you you can actually do it. Be part of a community and choose friends who can push you forward and give you that support and you will find this in a community as well. And then you have to show what you can do. Um, back in 1833, Charles Babbage had a party to showcase this machine he was working on. So that was his prototype and he showed it. Ada was intrigued by it. Someone will be interested in your idea. And so you need to show what you can do and that's how you will be seen. And here you can you know, present yourself to opportunities that give you the chance to teach others, um, look for opportunities where you can present what you know, um, that you can teach others um, and just, you know, be out there. Have a profile. Um, if you're into data science, publish your work. If you're, in, if you're an engineer, um, publish your work on GitHub, publish your work somewhere. Um, and if you're, I mean, just, just be seen, show, show it, show it, show it. I think that's the point I want to drive home. Um, build your network. Um, someone once said that if you have three friends who are idiots, you're going to be the fourth. If you have three friends who are great at Java, in this case, you are going to be the fourth. If you have three friends who are wealthy, you're going to be the fourth. And if you are, if you have uh, three friends who know where they're going, you are the, you are going to be the fourth person who knows where they're going. So the people you surround yourself with determine who you become. And so build your network, it translates to your net worth and you can see how this, how the people you surround yourself with determine who you become. So that's why we say that your network is your net worth. Um, and doesn't have to always mean um, money. It has to do with our character. It has to do with what choices we make in life. And so find that puzzle that fits uh, you perfectly and fits you right and goes in the right direction. Um, and then for you to win, you have to influence the industry. And this is where you're getting out there and making impact. You are getting into leadership positions where you can influence some of the decisions that are being made in the industry. Um, and that's just about having an impact lead um, um, and it's just, it, it, if you look back at um, Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, they worked on something and they published what they knew, even though they could not prove that concept. And they went down into the history books as people who influenced the industry. And so that's what it means to have an impact. Um, so what? So what, after all this, why are we doing all of this? And this is something that you need to ask yourself and uh, just figure out where you're heading to and where, what, what, what's your place? What's your magic place in this tech industry? And the question that you need to ask yourself is, what's your spark of genius? Ada Lovelace had that moment where she was super intrigued about um, Charles Babbage's difference engine and she probably couldn't stop thinking about it and she was very excited. So what's that thing that excites you? What's that thing that you know causes you to not sleep, causes you to 
have uh, to spend nights coding or what's that thing that really sparks um, something in you? Yeah. Um, Ada, that's Ada Lovelace, according to the internet. Um, I want to believe that's how she was looking, very beautiful. Um, so Ada had her spark of genius and you need to ask yourself, what is that thing that you want to solve for? What is that thing that you're passionate about? And how can that drive, be the driving force that keeps you motivated, that keeps you going? And um, yeah, um, that's Ada. We have programming today and she was the first um, programmer. And as you can notice, I haven't mentioned gender here. I believe men and women are all equal. We both have the same capabilities intellectually. And it's just how society has uh, branded women that now we have to start and get start getting more women into different industries because uh, it's just a matter of perception but Ada um, I mean I, I don't think Charles and Charles Babbage and Ada even ever thought that oh you're a woman or oh you're a guy you're a man so you can't really you know help me with this analytical engine thing no uh, I want us to strip down that label that I um, of this gender and remember that it's just you and what you can do and the world is really open for you to prosper. And so be a history maker. Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage made history. They went into the books of history because of sticking to what they were passionate about and wanting to solve problems. And so they stood out in their time and they paved the way for the rest of us um, at this time where we can solve really big problems and we can reimagine what technology can do. And so like I said before, it's easy to be forgotten. What legacy do you want to leave for future generations to come? Um, think about that. And so what? What will you do with your why? And your why here is, um, you know, when you get to that place where everything makes sense for you, where you got through the door and when you had a seat at the table and whether you built that table yourself and invited other people, what are you going to do with that power that technology gives us? Are you going to solve the hunger problem that we have? Um, we still have people dying of hunger. We still have um, the problem of corruption within governments and within um, different organizations. What are you going to do about that what are you going to do about that pain point that you know um makes you tick like what is that thing that you're going to do with technology um and even though it's something that's just close to your heart that is currently unspoken that's the problem that you want to solve so what are you going to do with your why and that's why you're in this tech industry because we can do so much more uh, with the technology that we have to solve the problems that we have today. If you look at how uh, 2020 has really kept us um, socially distant and people are, are working from home, there are people who don't have internet access and there are people who cannot work from home and so they are at risk of COVID how can you help those people um, be safe? Um, so that's just, we have so many problems and we don't know what problems will come up in the future. So when you find that why, um, do it. And to take us back again to why Charles Babbage really started inventing the, the difference engine, it's because he, 
was disturbed about having people having to do manual calculations and they were very time consuming and very men, uh, very uh, they were mentally exhausting and so that's the problem he solved and he and right now we have technology like he thought it was something small but it's what has changed an entire generation and so Winston Churchill once said history will be kind to me for I intend to write it and um, this is Churchill's way of saying he was going to be the winner, um, as well as the keeper of his own legacy. And it's been said that the winners write the history books. So, what do you want us to remember you uh, to remember you for? What are you going to do? And it's not going. It's not a must that it, it's. It becomes uh, something huge, like re, like inventing the the computers. I mean, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. But what is that spark that will make a mark for yourself and leave generations to come better? So, win. It's it's for you to choose to win, really. Um, and Beyonce said, go do it, be it, be about it, own your future, own your story. And you, if you write down your roadmap and don't do anything about it, it's not going to happen. So you need to go do it and make sure it happens and look for people who will help you get there. And so these are the key takeaways. Um, if I have spoken a lot and you feel kind of lost, just remember to be excellent in your skill. Remember to show your skill, share it, stay curious, stay learned and stay connected with the community um keep building and keep evolving with the technology because um as fast as technology is moving that's how fast you're gonna be left behind if you don't if you don't evolve with it and there are stories to prove this as you can see nokia um, ignored android and they were phased out of the market and it affected me as a developer because i lost all my applications that i had built on the Symbian platform, but I evolved and moved on to Android and Windows Phone, and I just kept moving. Um, don't feel sorry about the losses, they're going to be there, but you just keep, you just have to build resilience and keep going. And lastly, have an impact. Um, figure out your why and figure out how you're going to make a difference in the world. And then have a vision, be bold, move fast, live strategically and deliberately, do not be afraid of the unknown. Um, the same energy that you write that vision today, if you don't have it, is the same energy that you need to be ambitious with. So equal vision and equal ambition. And remember that you're unique and the world is waiting for the magic of your gift. And that's it. Um, you can find me everywhere on social media. Uh, most of them it's at It's Miss Carol. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. My GitHub is Miss Carol. And I also have a YouTube channel where I just do every other else, every other thing that <laughs> is about life and just chill. So that's it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. On behalf of Women Who Code, let's give a huge thank you to Carol. I can't think of a better way to kind of close out 2020 and look forward to 2021 in terms of figuring out who that board of directors are and, and how you choose to make your impact 
So thank you so much for uh, sharing your experiences and inspiring us to move forward. Uh, that being said, I know we've run over a little bit, but happy to take a couple of questions here. Uh, if anybody has any questions for Carol, feel free to submit them via the Q&A, and we'll go ahead and kind of move into the Q&A portion of today's talk. First and foremost, uh, we have an anonymous attendee saying that they are upcoming mobile developer. Is there a study group uh, or new devs in this area or perhaps a Slacker community? Uh, I actually just posted uh, the links to both our front end and mobile Slack. Feel free to join there. Uh, and there are study groups uh, that you'll see posted in the general Slack. Um, and Carol, I'm not sure if you have any other suggestions in terms of study groups outside of Women Who Code uh, for that question. Um. Well, I will answer for developer circles because that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, so we usually used to have um, small study groups for the different tracks that people had signed up for. So there was front end, um, data science, uh, deep learning or machine learning. But then all these developer circles, I find that there's almost everyone who can the, there are different uh, types of engineers, mobile, um, data scientists. And so joining a community around you, I um, just find out if there's a developer circle around your city. And I'm sure you will find like a study group or a community of uh, mobile devs. Absolutely. And I think just from Women Who Code side of things, we do have study groups on all of our tracks. Uh, and we'll be looking to grow those out a bit more in 2021. So feel free to join via Slack and find some more resources there. Another question that came in, can Carol be my mentor? <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Um, yeah, sure. Drop me an, I, uh, a message on Messenger or find me on LinkedIn um, or try Instagram, whichever I see first. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there you have that. And another question, is the Facebook developer community open to everyone? Yes, it's open to everyone. It's free. It's uh, a very great uh, community. And I have just been so grateful to be part of that community and learn a lot. So yeah, it's free. Just go to, um, just Google developer circles and you will see the link and then you can find out, um, you can see all the cities across the world. We are everywhere in the Americas, Europe, um, Africa, and Asia. And it's just a very vibrant community. So yes, please join. Great, thank you so much. So those are the three questions that came in. Does anybody else have any questions at this time? I actually just posted a link to your LinkedIn for everyone to connect or uh, reach out for some more advice. Okay. Great. Does anybody have any other questions before we wrap up today's webinar? Feel free to unmute and ask if you have any questions. And we're getting lots of uh, feedback in the chat, Carol. I'm not sure if you have it pulled up, but everything, everyone's saying, great talk. Thank you so much. Super inspired. Fantastic. Such an inspiration. I couldn't agree more. Uh, so thank you on behalf of Women Who Code for being here with us today and sharing all of your, your tips and advice for staying relevant and evolving your career. Uh, and as Carol said, if you have any other further questions for Carol directly, uh, feel free to reach out to her on LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter uh, and uh, happy to connect there. Uh, but on behalf of Women Who Code, thank you again, Carol, and thank you everyone for attending uh, one of our last events this year. And we look forward to what 2021 brings for the Women Who Code community. Uh, but again, thank you, Carol. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Mary. It's been exciting and such an honor to speak here. Um, and I can't wait to connect with everyone. Um, offline and online <laughs> absolutely well everyone have wherever you're joining from have a good rest of your day or evening uh but thanks and we will see you again great bye bye thank you